Welcome back to SuperCloud 22. I'm John Furrier, your host of theCUBE. We're here for a live performance in studio, bringing all the thought leaders around this concept of SuperCloud, which is a consortium of the smartest people in the industry, the, the Clouderati, some say, or just people in the field building out next generation cloud technologies for businesses, for the industry. You know, software meets infrastructure at scale and platforms, all great stuff. We have an expert here, CUBE alumni and friend of ours, uh, Howie Shu, VP of Machine Learning and AI at Zscaler. Hugely successful company, um, SaaS platform, whatever you want to call it, they're definitely super clouding in their own. Howie, great to see you. Thanks for spending time with us to unpack and, and grok the direction of the industry that we see we call it super cloud. Hey John, great to be back. Um, I'm expecting a night, very educational and then uh, interesting conversation here again. Yeah, well, you know, one of the things I love talking with you about is you're deep on the technology side, as well as you got the historian view like, like we do. We can, we've seen the movies before, we've seen the patterns, and now we're seeing structural change that has happened, that's cloud. Thank you very much, AWS, and Azure, GCP, and others. Now we're seeing structural change happening in real time, and we want to talk about it as it's happening. This is the purpose of this event, and, and that is, is that cloud is one. Okay, great, cloud operations on premises and edge are emerging, software is open source. It's the perfect storm for innovation, and new things are emerging. You're seeing companies like Snowflake and Databricks and Zscaler all building great products. But now it's not one thing anymore. It's a lot of things going on. So what is your take on SuperCloud? How do you see this evolving? What is some of the structural change that's happening in your mind? Yeah, so when you first reached out a few weeks ago about this event, I was like, hey, what is SuperCloud? I know, I know you tweeted a little bit <laughs> here and there, but I never really you know, double clicked, right? So I actually listened to some of your episodes, you know, the, the previous conversations. You know, I would say the way you define up um, super cloud is it's not just the multi-cloud. The multi-cloud is probably one aspect of it, right? You know, it's actually more beyond that, right? You know, a little bit, you know, towards pass, a little bit more towards the flexibility and then, you know, including, and also you want to include uh, the on-prem, uh, the edge, not just uh, the big three cloud, right? So, so there is a lot of the, uh, let's say, hybrid, uh, more inclusive, right? So the way I look at it is, it's now very different from my imagination of what the cloud would be, should be 10, 12 years ago. Because you know, at that time it was you know on-prem dominant, and then we say, hey, let's go cloud. I never for a second thought you know we would have ditched the on-prem completely, right? Mm -hmm. You know, on-prem has its own value, it's its own kind of a, uh, characteristics we wanted to keep, right? But the way we went for the last ten years is, hey, cloud, cloud everywhere. We embrace cloud. You know, the way I look at architecture is, is always a a uh, very much like a pendulum, right? We swing, we we swung from um, the centralized in the mainframe days, you know, back in the days, to more distributed, right? PC um, kind of a uh, architecture, you know, servers in your own data center, and then to the now the cloud, um, the big three cloud in particular, right? I think in the next 10, 15, 20 years, it will swing back to uh, more decentralized, more distributed uh, architecture again. Uh, every time you have a swing, because there is some fundamental reason behind that. We all knew the reason behind the current swing to the cloud. It's because, hey, the on-prem data center was too complex, right? You know, um, too expensive, right? It, you know, it would take at least six months to get any business application going, right? So it's compared to cloud, the swipe a credit card, frictionless, you know, pay as you go, it's so great. But I think we are going to see more and more reason for people to say, hey, I need a, um, a architecture uh, the other way around because of the decentralized use case, right? Web3 is one example, even though Web3 is still you know, emerging, right? Very, very early days. But that could be one reason, right? You mentioned the Zscaler is kind of a super cloud of its own, right? Uh, we always embrace public cloud, but a lot of the workloads is actually on our own, uh, you know, within our own data center. We take advantage of the uh, elasticity of the public cloud, right? Uh, but we also um, get a value, get a performance of the um, of our private cloud. So I would say uh, a company like Zscaler taking advantage of the super cloud already, but there will be more and more use cases. 
taking yeah. advantage. And of that's the use cases are key. Let me just go back and, and share uh, something we had on the panel earlier in the day, the, the Clouderati panel. Back in 2008, a bunch of us were getting together and we kind of were riffing, oh yeah, the future is going to be web services and clouds will talk to each other, workloads can work across this. There's going to be an abstraction layer, APIs is going to be talking to each other. A little bit early, but we tried to think about it in terms of the preferred architecture. Okay, way too early. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, AWS was just getting going, they were really kind of pumping, pumping on all cylinders there, getting that trajectory up. But it was use case driven. The Nirvana never happened. I mean, we were talking super cloud back then with the Clouderati group, and we were thinking, okay, hey, this is cool. But it was just an evolutionary thing. So I want to get your reaction. Today, the use cases are different. It's not just developers deploying on public cloud to get all those greatness and goodness of the cloud, to your point about Zscaler and others, there's on-premises use cases and edge use cases emerging. 5G's right there, that's going to explode. So the use cases now are all cloud-based. Again, this is an input into what we're seeing around super cloud. How do you see that? What's your reaction to that? And, and how do you see that evolving so that the methodologies and all the taxonomies are in place for the right solution? Right, I mean, you know, some of the use cases are already here, you know, have been here for the last few years. And again, I mentioned the Zscaler, right? The reason that the Zscaler needs the on-prem version of it is because it's impossible to route all the traffic to the big three cloud because they are still far away. Sometimes you need um, the presence much closer to you in order for you to get a, the level of the, um, the performance latency you want. Right, so, so that's why Zscaler has you know, so many data center of our own instead of leveraging the public cloud you know, uh, for most part. However, public cloud is still super important for Zscaler. I can tell you a story, right? You know, uh, two years ago, you know, at the beginning of the uh, pandemics, everyone started uh, working from home suddenly, right? Fortune 5, you are talking about company, Fortune 500 companies with 200,000 employees suddenly uh, having 200,000 employees working from home. Their VPN architecture is not going to uh, support that, that kind of the workload, right? Even Zscaler's own architecture uh, or the, 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 work, um, the presence is not enough. So overnight, we um, just uh, having so many new workloads to support this work from home, um, the, the zero trust network for our customers, literally overnight. So it wouldn't have happened without public cloud. So we took advantage of the public cloud. Yet at the same time, for many, many use cases that Zscaler is paying attention to in terms of the zero trust architecture, the latency, the latency guarantee aspect, the cost is so important. So we kind of take advantage of both. Yeah. Uh, today you may say, hey, you know, Zscaler is one of the, uh, not a majority of the uh, companies in terms of the cloud adoption or public cloud adoption, right? But I can say that, yeah, that's because it's more infrastructure, uh, security infrastructure, it's a little bit different um, for the, some of the <laughs> communication applications, right? Why not just put everything uh, on the <laughs> public cloud? That's doable today, yeah. however, Moving forward, next five, 10, 15 years, we expect to see Web3 kind of the use cases to, yeah. um, to grow more and more. In those kind of the decentralized use cases, I can totally see that uh, we, you know, <laughs> the, the, the on-prem presence is very important. Yeah, one of the things we're seeing with SuperCloud that we're kind of seeing cl clarity on is that there's a lot of seamless execution around less friction and around areas that require a PhD or hard work. And you're seeing specialty super clouds, apps, identity, data security. You're also seeing vertical clouds, Goldman Sachs doing financial applications. I'm sure there'll be some insurance. People in these verticals building on top of the CapEx on one cloud really fast and moving to others. So that's clearly a trend. The interesting thing I want to get your thoughts on, Howie, on an architectural basis is in cloud, public cloud generally, SaaS depends on IaaS. So there's an interplay between SaaS and the infrastructure as a service and PaaS as well, but SaaS and IaaS, they solve a lot of the problems. You mentioned latency. How do you see the interplay of these super clouds that, that utilize the SaaS IaaS relationship to solve technical problems? So in architecturally, that's been a tight integration on these clouds, but now as you get more complexity with super cloud, how do you see SaaS applications changing. Yeah, I view the super cloud is actually uh, reduced the complexity. Uh, the reason I'm saying that is, think about it in the world where you have 
public, predominantly public cloud kind of the architecture, right? Uh, 10 years ago, uh, AWS has a pro probably 20 services. Now they probably have you know, more than 1,000 services. Same thing with Azure, same thing with uh, GCP. I mean, who can make sense out of it, right? You know, if you just uh, consume the ICE or the big three cloud service as is, you, know, you need a PhD these days to make sense all of them. <laughs> So the way I think about super cloud or where you know, it is going is it has to provide more simplicity, um, a better way for people to make sense out of it, right? Because if, if I'm an architect and I have to think, hey, this is a public cloud, this is a multi-cloud, and by the way, certain things need to be run on the on-prem, uh, and how do I deal with the, uh, the uniform uh, nature of it, uh, my mind would, uh, would blow up. Awesome. Um, so I need a higher level abstraction. That higher level abstraction will hide the complexity of the where it is, which vendor. Uh, it will only tell me uh, the service level, right? You know, we always say you know um, the cloud is like electricity. I only wanted to know is that like 110 volt or 220, uh, 240, whatever that is. Um, I don't, I don't really want to <laughs> know more than that, <laughs> right? So, so I would say a a key requirement for the super cloud is it's reduced the complexity, higher level abstraction. It has to be like that. Yeah, and operational consistency is at the bottom. How we have one minute left, I want to get your thoughts. I'd like you to share what you're working on that you're excited about. It doesn't have to be with Zscaler. As you see the super cloud trend emerging, this is the next generation cloud, cloud 2.0, whatever we want to call it, it's happening, it's changing, it's getting better. What are you excited about? What do you see as really key inflection point variables in this big wave? Yeah, one of the things I really like, what I heard from you in the past about super cloud is a super cloud is not just one cloud or one vendor. It's almost like every company should have its own super cloud, right? You're talking about JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs of the world, that they need to have their own, their own super cloud. Zscaler and the security vendors, they may have their own cloud. So I think every Fortune 500, Fortune 2000 companies uh, will be a super, will have its own super cloud. So I'm excited about that. So why that's important? We also say that you know, in the next 10, 20 years, AI machine learning is going to take advantage, uh, is going to uh, help us a lot, right? So without super cloud, uh, it's very hard to uh, do AI machine learning because if you don't if you don't have a a, a place that you you know where the data is um, and then it's pretty hard and in the notion of the in the context of super cloud I totally foresee that the AI model will follow the data if the data is in the cloud it will go there if the data is on prem it will go there and then the super cloud will hide the um, the, the complexity of it. So if you ask me, my passion is leveraging AI machine learning to change the world, but super cloud will make that uh, easier, right? If you think about why Google, Facebook of the world are able to leverage AI better than 99% of the rest of the uh, world, because they figure out the super cloud for themselves, right? <laughs> and I think now it's the time for the rest of the Fortune 500 of, Fortune 2000 company to figure out its own super cloud strategy. What is my super cloud? I need to have my own super cloud. Each company needs to have its own super cloud. That's, that's how I uh, see it. Howie, always great to have you on. Thanks so much for spending the time and weighing in on this really important topic. We're going to be opening this up. It's not, a, not over. We're going to continue to watch the change as it unfolds and get an open community perspective. Thank you so much for being a great expert in our network and community. We really appreciate your time. Thank you for having me. Okay, okay, we're, that's it. We'll be up with more coverage here, a super cloud event after this short break. I'm John Furrier, host of theCUBE. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.